Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church or gave me so i'd like to welcome everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is called lack of application not education yeah. amen and this is what we have in the world is a lot of education amen uh, education i would say is at an all-time high but morality as at an all-time low amen the people could go to uh marriage counselings but yet di divorce is inclining people can go to all types of college courses and have all types of education but that doesn't mean that they have the ability or the heart to apply what they learn amen? amen and if you learn something but then you don't apply it then what is the point of learning it if you're not going to actually use it a lot of times as students you may have asked the questions to the teachers many times why are you teaching us these things if we're never going to use them especially in college it almost seems like the the curriculum or the the institutions purposely go out of their way to make things more complicated than they need to be where it's not even an applicable uh, education it's just like making things more difficult and uh, you know even for myself when I became a licensed optician I had to take a board exam uh, from the state of Ohio in Columbus and one of my board exams was to be licensed to do contact lenses and uh, and a lot of the questions on the exam, they were asking us questions about ancient equipment that might even be considered antiques. You know, they're so outdated and so uh, unapplicable, and they would want us to know all this equipment that nobody uses. And you couldn't even find one or buy one if you wanted to, a shadow graph and this weird uh, uh, old equipment. They wanted us to study it and know it so that we could pass the exam but then when you would actually go to fit someone or do an eye exam for contact lenses you would never use any of that information and so i think sometimes man purposely makes things uh, complicated and i know the devil purposely makes things complicated so that he can confuse us amen? amen like the bible says god is not the author of confusion but the devil is and one of the ways that he produces confusion is through Lacking. education amen so we're going to talk about lack of application, not education. No amount of worldly education can replace godly truth. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So as Christians, we don't have to be intimidated by people with PhDs or high education. We don't have to feel like we're inferior to them or they're better than us because they're educated. That doesn't mean anything. I've seen people in God with faith go farther ahead than people who should have been farther ahead, but because they didn't have the favor of God. You go farther with the favor of God. You go farther in obedience to the Word of God than folks that have intelligence. Amen. No amount of worldly education can replace godly truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 7, I am purposely giving you this scripture backwards. I'm not going to give it in order because I want to make a point. All right, It says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. This is takes place in a lot of churches. You have pastors, you have bishops, you have popes, you have all kinds of folks that have gone to theology school for years and years and years and years. But yet, even though they study the Bible, they still don't get the truth of the Word of God because they're studying it with the wrong heart. And they're studying it with the wrong intentions. And they're studying it with the wrong spirit. And until they have the right heart with God and they become born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, all their education will not take them closer to God. Because they know it 
They know the Word, but they don't apply it. See, I've shared this, that if God tells you to do something and you don't do what God tells you to do, you stop growing at that point of your disobedience. Yes. And you can do all the works you want. You can do prison ministries, jail ministries. You can evangelize street preaching. You can do all kinds of stuff. But when you don't obey God in one area of your life, your spiritual growth stops. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. What is obedience? Obedience is application. Obedience is application to the Word of God. And you can learn all you want about the Word of God. That does not replace obedience. Look at this. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. So here you have right here, you have a faithful student, right? He's been in college for so long or theology school for so long that his hair started thinning out. He's been in class for so long that his muscles started diminishing and his fat started disappearing. And that's how it is with a lot of folks. Amen. Just constantly learning, but never in the truth. It's a sad thing to see. You know, I've been in college, I've been surrounded by professors, and they know so much, especially if you go into like anatomy and physiology, and, and they try to explain they try to explain stuff that they have no business explaining. And it's not that they don't have any truth or they don't have any knowledge. In fact, it's impressive a lot of times what they have, but then when you listen to them long enough, they start to sound foolish. And they start to try to explain things that they really can't explain. You know, one of my uh, professors in my physics class said, he said this, and it always I, I still don't understand what he said. He said the greatest minds and the greatest professors still to this day don't understand light. And I still, I don't think I'm even intelligent enough to understand what he meant by that. Because I know a whole lot about light. I know the speed it travels, at what distance. I know how it's manipulated through prisms. And, and I could tell you all kinds of stuff. But even that, he said, and he knows all that too. But he said they still don't understand what light, light is. Jesus said, I am the light. Amen. And until you understand who Jesus is, you're not going to understand anything. And nothing will ever really make sense. Amen. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Worldly education does not help people to live right. Now, notice how I said I gave that first scripture backwards. I did it on purpose. Because right now it's going to list off in the last days there's going to be people doing all this and this. And then at the end of that it says these are people who are forever learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Why? Because worldly education does not help people to live right. You have professors at college who have so much intelligence, so much knowledge about uh, science and math and, and geography and history and they have so much education but yet when it comes to basic common sense don't sleep with underage students in your class or you'll go to prison boom they're absent-minded they have no self-control they lose their common sense how could you know so much about so much but then when it comes to you keeping yourself out of jail you can't then what good is having all those degrees in education you hear it on the news 24 7 it becomes boring Another teacher goes to prison for statutory rape, for sleeping with one of the children. And then even in the church, you have pastors. I, I watched this, uh, prison, uh, this prison documentary where you had a pastor of a church and he's sleeping with uh, underage women in the church. And he goes to prison. And then he goes to prison and then the inmates are lying on the pastor. And they're saying that he was molesting little boys. So two gang members, they beat this guy within an inch of his life. Thinking that he did something that he really didn't do. I think he was like uh, 25 years old and the girl was like 16 or 17. Something like that. 
and it was consensual, but not legal. And if he was in a different state, it would have been legal, depending on the state. And then when the people, the gang members found out from the guards what he was, because the guards know why people are in prison, they have their records. And so when the guards told the inmates who beat him up why he was in there, and they're like, oh, well, you know, now the, the people who beat him up, now they're in isolation, they're in punishment because they were misinformed. But here you have a pastor who got beat up for something he didn't do, but he was in prison for something he did do. And even though it might have been legal, see, if something's legal, that doesn't mean it's right with God. Amen. We still are bound to this Bible. We are still bound to apply this Word of God to our life. It doesn't matter if they legalize marijuana. It doesn't matter if they legalize uh, alcohol getting drunk. It doesn't matter if they legalize fornication and adultery. It doesn't matter what man legalizes because when you die, all those congressmen and those politicians who legalize sinful things, you're not going to face them in judgment. You're going to face God and the white throne of judgment. And you're going to give an account not to the congressman, to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, now remember, these details right here are specifically about people who are forever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. The, this know that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own self. Now let me ask you a question. That is not a good thing. Lovers of your own self. That's what Satanism is. So here you can have a high level of education but that doesn't stop you from loving yourself. In fact sometimes the Bible says with much knowledge or knowledge puffeth up. In other words the more you know, the more proud you can become. And so look at what it says. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own self. All that education is not stopping them from being or making them humble. Covetness means that they're uh, wanting other people's things. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. You got kids with high levels of education, but that don't mean that they obey their parents unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth bakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And this is all a bunch of details and characteristics of the people who are forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Traitors, heedy, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. You know, it blows my mind when there's churches that they know the Bible, they'll preach the Bible, they'll teach the Bible, but they never experience the power of God in their own life. They've never been delivered from sin. They've never been delivered from anything. They've never seen the healing of God. They've never seen God in their life because they deny the power. They'll say that the things that God did were only back then, that He no longer does what... It's a dispositional scripture, they call it. That God only did things back then, He doesn't do it now. Denying the power of God. And then what happens is the scriptures just become another course. Yeah, that's right. Just another course. It says, For this, for of sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laded with sins, led away with diverse lusts. And I've watched this happen. I've watched people know so much about the Bible, but then when a, a woman walks by, they lose their Christianity. <laughs> and they start talking ungodly about the woman. Or they try to sin with the woman. I've watched people do this in churches. Yep. Gifted in preaching and teaching and music. 
And then when a new woman walks in the church, they set all that aside and they do everything to sin with the woman. The more we know about Jesus, the more accountable for our actions we need to be. Amen. How many know with what you already know, God is our, even if you don't ever learn anything more about the Bible, you never go to church ever again for the rest of your life. What, what, with what you already know, God is already going to hold you accountable to what you already know. How many know that when you're a child, you may wet the bed? And you lose control over your, your body movements or you have not developed that part and, and you just, you wet the bed. But how many know as you mature, you stop wetting the bed? You don't develop self-control over your own body. And if we have that self-control to stop wetting the bed, <coughs> do we not have the same control to stop sinning? Amen. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20, it says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge, get this, they have education, they have knowledge of the Lord. So it's not saying that they're ignorant. It's not saying that they don't know any better. It's actually saying the opposite of that. It's saying, for if after they escape the pollutions of the world. So this is basically saying that there are some people who, because of knowledge of Jesus Christ, they got out of the sin. They got out of it. But it's saying, for if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled thereon and over therein and overcome it, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So these folks have no lack of education. They have lack of application. And the Bible is saying if you have a lack of application in your life, If God got you out of something and you know not to go back to it and you go back to it, He's saying that it's going to get worse. It's going to multiply. And even psychologists would not disagree with that. That when you keep going back to an addiction or something that's evil, your mind becomes, becomes more dependent on it. i got to tell you, I'm terrified of going back to the lifestyle that I used to live. I can't even I can't imagine it. If it gets worse cuz it got pretty bad. Pretty bad. <coughs> it says for it had been better for them to not not to have known the way of righteousness. So, I want you to understand this. Look at what it says. For it had been better for them to have not, not to have known the way of righteousness. This is 100% why people do not want to go to church. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because they want to, they are willingly ignorant. That's right. They are willfully ignorant. They want to use their ignorance as an excuse. Yes. But even according to man, ignorance of the law is not exempt from the law. So if you don't know something is a speeding limit and you still break that law, it don't matter whether you know about it or not. Guess what, folks? You still get that ticket. You still have to go to court and you still have to give an account to that law. Well, you could kill someone and say, hey, I didn't know that we weren't supposed to kill people. (laughs) You know, I thought it was okay. I didn't know about it. And no judge on earth is going to say, well, in that case, go ahead. Let him out of here, bailiff. Take the cuffs off of him and send him on his way. You know what? Send him on a cruise. (coughs) No. (coughs) So if you already know what you know now, especially coming to this church, you might as well stick with it. 
<laughs> because even if you quit now, you already know too much. You might as well finish your course. That's right. Amen. Amen. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteous than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is returned to his own vomit. Again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Well, this puts a big dampening on the once saved, always saved doctrine of the devil. Amen. <laughs> I know you just got to scribble out a couple scriptures and you can, uh, you'll be good. <laughs> we need to be quick to help <laughs> and slow to advise. Amen. Look here, folks. You ever been in the, the title bureau or the license bureau, and the first thing when you go there, there's a ticket number, right? Anyone ever seen that? Take a ticket. Or you ever went to some uh, uh, grocery store, and you went to go get meat, and there's like a lines and lines of people, and they're like, take a ticket, get a number, yeah. right? Well, that's what I needed to set up in this church by the pulpit for people trying to advise me. I needed to set up a ticket system because everyone had advice for me on how to be a pastor. And I literally was thinking about investing in one of those ticket machines with one of the numbers. And I would just sit up here all day long, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 26, 27, 1,000, 1001. All everyone knows how to be a pastor. Just advising. But when it came time for application, for help, those tumbleweeds like in the Western movies, tumbleweeds blowing around. And just all you would hear is a little breeze. When it came time to vacuum the church, no one was to be found. When it came time to, for me to scrub the toilets, all those advisors, so profound in their advice, when it came time to scrub the toilet, I couldn't find anybody. And so many times, see, people stop giving me advice because they learned the way that I deal with them. I tell them yes and whatever it is. I don't care if I agree with it, disagree with it. Whatever their advice is, I say yes. I don't care. But I make them do what they advise. Pastor, we should do communion that way. They have these little uh, communion things that their little packets. Wow! Wow! I, I'm so into what you're saying. I, I'm, I, I love it so much that I want to assign you the responsibility to donate and pay and run and manage the thing that you just recommended. Uh, well, um, um, well, uh, well, maybe you know when the church gets to that point, we'll see if we could do that. And I do the same thing with everything. People advise, oh, you should do this, do this. Yeah, great, let's do it. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> Pastor, we should do this. Yeah, go ahead. We should do this. We should do it. Yeah, go ahead. You bring the food. You do this. You run it. You open up the church. You set it up. You hand out. Let's do it. You pay for everything. No, when it comes to the actual trying to help, they don't want to. They just want to tell me what to do. I'm sure you don't have anyone like that in your life. I'm sure you never met anyone who wants to tell you everything. If you have a business or you run a company, every, you, there are paratroopers shooting from the plane with signs of advice on what you should do. Like, just like the war. Dropping out everywhere from the sky. Oh, you should do this. You should do this. Oh, you know what? Can you help me? Well, I would, but... Um, so I got to tell you, look, by all means, if you got some good advice and it's from God, bring it forward. But I'm going to put it on you. We are called to help God's way, not enable sin. See, a lot of times with some of the church calls helping people is actually hurting people and it's actually enabling them. We need to be instructed by God in a case-by-case -case situation and how to help people. 
right? Within this month, I've had three people come to me and tell me that their electric bill has shut down and they need money for their electric bill, right? I don't know if it's a trend or something using the electric scam or what, but but look, I've been homeless. I, I've, I, I've been on food stamps. I've been in homeless shelters. I've been sleeping in the car. I, I, I've been sleeping without a car. And I know that folks can get by very well with very little if they're living God's way. Amen. Because I've done it. So here, one of these folks that I have no clue who the person is, never met the person in my life. She sends me a message on Facebook. And she says, Pastor, is there anyone from your church or anyone from your church or for you or anyone? Can you help me with the electric bill? Um, I have a meeting, a scheduled a meeting at the end of the month to have it turned back on. Can anyone from your church help me to get this electric? Immediately, my heart bleeds for her. I feel so bad for her. So much compassion for this lady. Right? I want to help her. I can help her. I should help her. But then, I go to her Facebook page, and she just posted that day, the same day that she's asking me for money for the electric bill, I see a $30 bottle of Jim Bean. How do I know it's $30? Because I just recently Googled how much is a bottle of Jim Bean. And then next to that bottle, that $30 bottle of alcohol, I see a name brand Bud Light beer can, which that's about eight bucks right there. Now we're working with 38 bucks right there in that picture. And then I see him smoking good. Chief him like Chief Yahoo. Eight dollar pack of cigarettes. Now we're pushing, we're pushing like Dick and Chuck said, forty two bucks, right? And then that was only the little narrow parameter of the picture that I could see. So forty two bucks in my apartment in Parma, forty two bucks would last like three four months on the electric bill. So and that was just that day and and I didn't even take the time to scroll down for the last 10 years you've been spending thousands and thousands of dollars on alcohol and drugs and cigarettes yeah of course of course you can't afford the electric no really well let me let me take the money that's given to the church to share the word of God and pay the church bills, let me be irresponsible with that money because I'm not even getting paid as a pastor. Let me take that money and give it to someone so that they can put their electric on and keep smoking and drinking. Yeah, that's right. Let me do that. No. No. See, we need wisdom from God. See, a lot of times what we call, and a lot of times when we're not living right, we feel better to, we, we become deceived. When we're living in sin, we are easily deceived and we feel, we work out of emotions and out of guilt because of our sin and we start, what we think helping people is actually destroying them. Amen. Is actually killing them and what we call help. See, I know this, that no matter how close I get to God, no matter how much I know about the Bible, no matter how many scriptures I know, I have to be humble and I have to admit that I don't even know how to help myself, let alone help another person that I don't even know. But the only hope that I know, the only help that I know or hope that I know is from Jesus Christ. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. 
Old Brooklyn Christian Church.